that as America got less racist, all of a sudden now 77% of black babies are born without a father, where before it was 26%. And I suppose the question is this, because this is the question about systemic racism, right? What law that is in practice today actively discriminates against black people? Today, we're going to check out Charles K. Cumulatus Ways Beating Sociology Student. Guys, let's get straight into this. Do you think that slavery and ensuing Jim Crow laws had a lasting impact on the black community in the United States? Some, and that's a good question. So if you, imp if you correlate all the impact of Jim Crow and slavery, I would say that you could generously say 26% single motherhood in the black community in the 1960s. So about 26% of all black babies born in the 1950s and 1960s were born to a single mother. Now it's 77%. So I would ask you, why did it jump 50 points, 50% since the Civil Rights Act as America got significantly less racist? So that's fine. I don't know why it jumped that, who cares? But well, it wasn't slavery or Jim Crow, it no. was something else. So the only lasting impact that slavery had on the US was that less um, black families had fathers. No, not necessarily. But have you ever known anyone that's owned a slave? No, but I know a few presidents who did. You know them personally? <laughs> so, so you know anyone that was ever a slave? Well, no, because... <laughs> so, so, okay, I don't know anyone who was a slave. So it had no impact? No, it had some impact. The question is, did it have an impact that is measurable and significant enough now in 2021 where we saw a key metric that influenced the livelihood of the black community, like single motherhood rate, that as America got less racist, all of a sudden now 77% of black babies are born without a father, where before it was 26%. And I suppose the question is this, because this is the question about systemic racism, right? What law that is in practice today actively discriminates against black people? So, so here's what I would say to that. The idea of capitalism and America, like you said, is, is it doesn't matter who you are, show me what you got, is fresh start. So what would happen if you had like 150 years in a country for your family to build wealth, to own a house, to have a job, to get college education for your kids, to build generational wealth. And then you took another family who didn't have the opportunity to do any of that for 150 years and then set them off on the same even starting point. Is that really an even starting point? Is and that would that not sense? result in some kind of systemic disadvantage so, for those people. So the black middle class was the fastest growing demographic in the 1940s and 1950s until the Great Society Act and that intervention. It's very tempting to do what you're doing. And I'm not faulting you for it because you've probably been propagandized to believe it. And that's okay because I think you're actually a victim in this case because you've been misled to want to believe that things you never lived under, never understood, and that I think you are partially seeing had a disproportionate impact in the world that you're living in today. So for example, if that were to be true, then first generation immigrants would not be able to quickly be able to make good choices and move up the ladder in this country, which I think we have some first generation immigrants here tonight. Now, let me say this, that this idea that America is systemically racist to the core would also be quickly debunked by the fact that more blacks have legally immigrated to America since the 1980s than ever were here brought as slaves. Over two million blacks from the Caribbean and from Nigeria and from Western Africa have come here to America. So the question is why is it that in every statistic that you could probably rattle off, are black people doing worse than white people? What is it? Well, I would point to the fact that fathers are not in the home because it was 26% of black females in the 1960s were single mothers, now it's 77%. If you look at the Brookings Institution, a liberal think tank, there are three things you need to do to stay out of poverty in America. Number one, graduate high school. 
Well, because of public sector unions and the dominance of our government schools, that's harder than ever in far too many communities. Not just, racial, not just black communities, not just Hispanic communities. The second thing, get a job, any job. And the third thing is, to obviously not to commit crimes, but to try, to try to get married before you have children. And so some of what I believe has contributed to the downfall of some of these communities has nothing to do with white people with the neck on black people. Instead, it's the following. Fathers no longer being in the home, the rise of sexual anarchy that came in post-1960s yeah. liberalism that removed this idea of sex being confined to a marital relationship to be gratuitous and everywhere. All of a sudden, you've seen an increase in the birth, in not just the birth rate, but the single motherhood rate and abortion alongside of it. I would just ask this question. Just I'm just curious. How much do you think outputs are are based on people's decisions, based on the advantages they're born into. I mean, as someone who's taken introduction to sociology, your life is greatly influenced by what the, you know, you're, the conditions you're born into. But I promise this will be the last thing. Just you say there's less fathers in the home of you know many black families, and yes. that's the issue. So what do you think is keeping fathers out of the home in those? It's a great do question. Think, do you think it could be? Over policing and police arresting, like disproportionately. We went this, do you think it could be law enforcement disproportionately enforcing laws in black neighborhoods and arresting more black males than any other demographic? So blacks are actually under arrested and under policed per the percentage of crimes they commit. We talked about some of those numbers. But let me tell you one thing in particular. In the Great Society Act, we decided as a civilization to subsidize single motherhood. In the 1960s, we told black women, you no longer need to be married to have children, you can get married to the government. And we saw a dramatic escalation and increase of the deterioration of the nuclear family and a replacement of that, of the nanny state and the welfare state. And I would say this, that every single activist group that steps up that talks about systemic racism and oppression. If you look at the data, purely the data, if there is a movement to put black fathers back in the home and to try and challenge the sexual anarchy that came in the post-1960s and had a more prudent and pious view of sexual relations in America, which is a very unpopular view, by the way, for most Americans, but it's true that before the 1960s, sexual relations were at least culturally supposed to always be confined to marital relationships. The more gratuitous that we have been in trying to catalog it in media and in pop culture and in Hollywood and, yes, in schools, then all of a sudden you have seen people say, well, why do I need to get married for that? Marriage is the bedrock institution, and strong families create strong communities which create strong civilizations. And this is why immigrant communities that have come to America, and first-generation immigrants, they're able to move so quickly up the socioeconomic ladder because they might not have wealth, they might not have big bank accounts, they might not own a lot of land, but they have the thing they know that will keep them together, which is a family that will not be broken up at any means necessary. I'll finally say this. Let me just say this. No, I, I, I want to th thank you for coming because it took courage to ask that question. I'm just going to ask you to do one thing. Please forget everything you learn in Introduction to Sociology 101 because it was likely all garbage. So thank you so much. Guys, I'll say this. The main reason why fires are not at home is because of the sexual anarchy. Reason is, like, think about it. You've seen different people having sex, even when you don't like this person. You just want to have sex with this person. And more like a lot of, I, I won't say a lot of black people have conscience, but like, <laughs> when you talk about black people, there are people who are mostly religious. And let's say our culture kind of back up with, like, Christianity. You really won't want to kill a child and you're thinking about it, yo, I want to keep this child. And the guy who has sex with you just wants to have sex with you. He does not have feelings for you. So he cannot get married to you. And more like, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you and the child. Like, he just want to, you know, live your life. And I'll say this. A lot of black people do drugs. And uh, they believe it's the easiest way they can get money. They can get the peas. Like, they can, they can get their peas. And it's... It's, it's heartbreaking because you doing drugs is actually one of the fastest way you can actually get money. Imagine you getting like, let's say, 10 grand in, 10 grand in a month or like 20 grand in a month. It's, it's, it's good money. Like, let's be honest, it's good money. 
And you get that kind of money. You can pull any girl and when you get pregnant, you're not interested in it. Because you get like six different girls pregnant. Like, you're paying child support. Then, boom, you're in jail. Bro, or they shoot you. And stuff like that. Most of the men that you're not seeing at home, they are either in jail or they are dead. The ones that are not dead, they are just useless. Like, seriously, like, I believe we are creating lazy men. Like, the world we are living in right now is creating lazy men. And I will say this. Some black men are actually running away from their responsibilities and it's heartbreaking. See, as a black man, you, you are supposed to have pride in taking care of your family. Like, that is where your pride is supposed to be in. Like, you knowing that you're paying your children fees, you're taking care of your wife, even if she has a job, you have no interest in her money. As a black man, you're supposed to be able to take care of your wife. She's going to support you in any way she can, but like, yo, you're supposed to be able to take care of her and your children with your full chest without needing any help from her or anybody. And I feel this is what a black man is supposed to be proud to do. Or a man, I'm not even saying black, as a man, this is what you're supposed to be able to do. You're able to take care of your family as a man. But the Bible actually says that a man should be able to provide for his home. Your, your wife is your partner, but like you are the provider, you're the head of the family. And see, I believe most men should have this mindset. I won't say black, because I believe that white men still run away from their responsibilities and a lot of men now they don't run away from their responsibilities and I don't that is a wrong thing to do you have to stand and take off the responsibility you have even if it's pretty hard it's easier to run away but guys don't think about this just like share subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time guys please